Now, data visualization, you can do any, you can be anywhere on that spectrum. You can do that somewhere in the middle, and then uh, Andy's books and others. So, Cairo then is an uh, excellent book. Stephen Few here represents the, uh, the Tufty side of things, the, the perfect way to design an information dashboard, a business style dashboard. And over here, you've got um, a database designer um, called David McCandless, very famous, has written a number of books as well. Um, information is Beautiful is one that he's particularly famous for. And so there you go, there's um, his book. Um, now, I often tell us, I think this is the first data visualization book I ever got. It's very much just a coffee table for this book. So before I, before I even opened Tableau, before I sort of knew best principles, I saw this in a bookshelf job or I read about it and I thought, this is fun, there's some great stuff in here. Um, it's, it's interesting, it's accessible, it's colorful, it looks great, and it kind of drew me into data visualization. And I thought, well, that might be um, quite a cool thing to do as a job. I was working in market research at the time. It made me think, we can do data visualization here, can't we? Surely there's a, a more interesting way of um, showing data other than just tables and charts, that kind of thing. So, um, from that book, here's an example of one of his charts. It's quite a well-known one that you might have seen. This isn't in Tableau, but it's like a, like a true map that you could do in Tableau. Um, and it's called the Billion Poundogram. And essentially what it is, it's just a very sort of simplified way of showing how um, the one billion pound, um, I think it was the national debt, was all sort of split out. But you can, um, you can look at this and you can see, well, I don't, I don't know, look at this. We've got... We've got 13 pounds there, we've got 12 pounds there. They don't quite look in proportion. That one pound looks a bit big for 23. If you look at this and you think, well, all right, there's, there's these curved corners there, that's already taking away some of the accuracy. You can criticize that, you can say, and people do, that it's not a very good uh, dashboard. Whereas others, perhaps who are not taking it so seriously, will think, that's really accessible. I understand this, I could look at this and, and take a lot of information out of this. For a long time, and you're not you're not sort of in your mind deliberately looking at the sizes and areas of the of the squares of the landed squares. We could get to the really good um, way of looking at it. So I was preparing this talk, and I thought, right, well, I'll talk about this book. It's the first data visualization book I ever bought. And then I thought, no, it's not, because I found this on my um, shelf. Pop charts, comedy graphs with your favourite tunes, things meatloaf would do for love. <laughs> I had this about two or three years earlier. I, I got this, I'd seen it at a man's and mass for Christmas in uh, jokey ways of showing data. And, and so that, even earlier, has sort of sparked how you can even have fun doing this kind of thing. Um, so here's one. You, you can criticize this in all sorts of ways. Well, why have you got a, a line graph going between man and Egyptian? What is, that, that makes no sense. Where, where's my numbered scale here? What does preferred gait selection mean? Never mind that. It's fun, it's a joke, it's a riddle, and you can look at it and think, oh, I see, yeah, I get it. Susanna Hoff's bangles, what like an Egyptian. Frankie Valley, stylistics, right? What like a man. So it's just a, a sort of, in a way, it's like a, a puzzle, a riddle. Do you understand the references? And can you sort of um, uh, understand it in a data visualization term like that? So I had a lot of fun with that book, and I've sort of forgotten about it. So I've got a few more of these in here just to. Um, I said just to keep you awake, I think you are awake, that is just keep me concentrating. So, um, a little bit about me. Um, I work for the Higher Education Statistical Agency. Um, that's not why I'm here, you'd be pleased to, to know, because um, I'm not going to show you any sort of higher education related dashboards. But what I do a lot in my spare time is I play with Tableau. Um, and I put a lot of what I do, or a lot of things I think about, in my blog called Questions and Data Bits. Or I just kind of gimmick, if you like, that I try and make everything into a question so that I can um, I can phrase things into something that perhaps brings a, a bit of debate. You know, I might do something, but am I doing it in the right way? Do you like the way I'm doing this, or, or are there better ways of doing it? Uh, you know, I've I just I just thought of different um, topics. So my last one there was um, just extolling the the virtues of a uh, small multiple, multiple visualizations, which I really like doing. So this is my blog, and I, I um, encourage you to come look at it. And um, one of the questions which I posed a few months ago, which is going to be the, the topic of my talk, is um, do we take data visualization too seriously? 
I don't think you can be seen to see these characters, and I think that's probably how the most sort of hits and most interested of the things of uh, all the pages about them. So I, I framed it with um, this uh, <laughs> high tech chart here, if you like. Um, th these are all three charts that I've done um, on different things. Uh, so you have a, a bar chart, there's a little bit blurred from there, but obviously a sort of standard bar chart. No one would dispute that a bar chart is very often a, a perfect way of showing uh, categorical information like that. Um, on the right, people don't mind that, that's fine. That's me um, in Tableau trying to recreate um, an album cover and um, recreating using data from Oscar nominations. So I had a lot of fun with that. Um, and there's ways that I can show you how I did that, but in what, that's, that's kind of obvious as to what it is. People know that when they're looking at that, they're not trying to find any great analytics from it. But looking at it, if you like data or not, then you might like that. If you don't, you just move on to the next thing. If you look at it, you see, oh, okay, this is, this is Meryl Streep here, and these are her nominations, and these are her examples, and that kind of thing. So I have a lot of fun with that, but people don't mind. It's these ones in the middle, where it looks like a serious subject. You think you should be getting some um, analytical value out of it, but have you done it a little bit differently? Have I made mistakes? Have I, have I not really taken it too seriously? I, I've, done a, I've done a map of pet ownership, which looks like a map, but really it isn't a map, but just arranged cats and dolls to look, to look like a map. So that was the bit that I did that got a fair amount of, um, sort of criticism and love and equal measures. No, it didn't. It got more criticism than love, but in my head it got people about the same. But it got a lot of people talking. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the talk. So um, I've got well, I remember, about eight, I think, eight sort of ideas as to what you can do in certain situations when um, you want to just sort of think a little bit differently about how you might want to visualize things. Now, these are not very often, there's a little bit of crossover, but these are not very often things that you will be have a chance to do in your job, let's say. So if, um, if you use a cliche situation, if you have a report needed for the MD's desk and you want to see figures easily, the ultimate insight. Some of these things that I'm going to show you aren't necessarily going to be one of the kind of things that we want to see. So make sure you stay and listen to Ryan later. He's going to ask some much better advice than I'm going to give you now. But what I want to talk to you about is just some of the things that you can do if you want to improve your skills, you want to improve your enjoyment, if you want to have a bit of fun, if you want to um, uh, push the boundaries of Tableau, if you want to see, well, hang on, it can do this for work, it can do this for pleasure. No, I don't think it can just combine the two. So the first one I've said is be tangential. So what do I mean? Um, I mentioned the IronViz here, and um, a lot of you you see one about IronViz. IronViz is a competition that Tableau run. They run three feeder competitions, well they run three globally and then a, a, an additional one for Europe. Um, and these are competitions where basically it's up to you. Do something good, do something that, that creates a bit of wow, do something that and really shows up what Tableau can do, um, and then the winners will then get um, picked to, to form on stage at the, the conference in a speed busy competition. Um, they are marked on design, storytelling, and analysis. So um, if you want to win the competition, then you, you make sure that you really sort of try and um, have those three things considered. If you don't, if you're just having a bit of fun with Tableau, then you know, there's anything that you can do. Um, and so I came up with this, um, and it is tangential. I thought, well, this isn't really, I may spare you the musical company. Because this is animating now, this means I can just tell you to all go to my Tableau public um, page and have a look and you can see this is poor animation and enjoy it and, and vote for it as your favourite. Of course, you don't have to do that. Um, but what I wanted to do was show something to do with Handel's water music. Um, the theme was water, and I knew that there would be some uh, beautiful visualisations. There's nothing that a Tableau can be useful better for beautiful infographic, um, long form visualizations and you really must have a look and see some of the work that some people have done, including at least a few people in this room 
who really are going to be the, the sort of uh, top 10 visualizations if you push through without a wall. I didn't feel I wanted to do that. I didn't feel that's where my skills might lay, so I thought, well, tangential water. I always wondered if I could visualize music. Um, let's try that, water music. And that's okay. I've entered this, and this gets as much um, uh, publicity, airtime, as, as much shares, as much interest as anything else. I don't think it deserves to win any competitions because storytelling, analysis, design, I'm not so sure. But it's a great opportunity to uh, be tangential. There we go, finally it started. Um, I want to bring it back to the uh, microphone, but just to show that, you know, I found a way of animating Tableau by um, this game is down. I've heard of that too, you, you're not, you don't have your times I've heard that. And uh, my wife is even more fed up with it. But I managed to find out a way of, of animating Tableau by putting um, 2,346, I think, different frames into um, the video I'm playing. So I had fun with that by being tangential. I did, you know, I did, I did put some analysis in. I put some very sort of Neil art style analysis, but I looked at the difference between pitches. I looked at the different sections of the orchestra. I looked at the different um, types of notes, the trills, the accidentals, and things like that. So I got into it, and I, I did. Um, I was looking at this very data-centric way and I was telling stories with it, but I did that because I thought, I don't think I want to do something about water. I think I want to just take that word water and run with it and do something a little bit different. So, number two, I said be eye-catching. Now, there's more to visualization than being eye-catching. Um, everyone knows that really, but if you want to get noticed in the first place, sometimes an eye-catching design is what's going to make you seen in the first place. So um, intrigue leads to insight. My friend Simon always tells me, and I think there's a lot of uh, truth in that. Uh, and my example of this is the one that you've just seen. Um, you're going to see that, and if you know, it's, I, I think anyway, it draws you in, even if you think, what on earth is he doing here? What, what's this about? Why is not this just a bar chart to see about actors with six or more acting and having a war foundation? So, yes, yeah, so although it's a project for me to learn and to try and do things, so by being eye catching, people will notice. And um, you see it here, this was, it certainly wasn't the only one, it was in about uh, 15 or 20 gorgeous visualizations, but this was picked up at the recent Tableau conference to be in a Beers Gallery. And I think I'll be. That's a sort of highlight, a career highlight for me as a mathematician, not an artist, to have something that you can do in Tableau just by uh, visualizing data that people can see as what well, they might consider a work of art, or at least a kind of work of art, something that looks quite good in you know, this gallery. Um, so, um, this is a quote from Amanda Cox, who's a sort of, uh, an editor of the graphic designer work has worked in the New York Times in a few years. There's a strand of the data this world that argues that everything could be a bar chart. That's absolutely correct. Um, I look, look out for Charlie Hutchison here, but he's, uh, he's hiding. Charlie, if you're on the live feed here, you're probably shaking your fist at the screen. Um, <laughs> everything can be a bar chart, and it gives right into a chart type as well, and it should be, because you can do pretty much everything with a bar chart. But then it also says that's possibly true of also a world without joy. Um, I kind of agree with that as well. Um, which leads me tangentially on to my next plot, which is a, a joy plot. Now there's a lot that's right about joy plots, and um, uh, there's probably even more wrong about them. If you know what a joy plot is, um, I don't you remember the joy division um, album cover from um, 1979, I think, that it was just a black and the reason I'm pointing to T-shirts because kids wear it on T-shirts now. It seems to have had a sort of uh, a revival. But it, it's essentially just sort of um, uh, radio waves which, which overlap each other. So if you've got a joy plot, you can't see the data that's behind it. You can give an idea of what's going on, but it breaks the rules. You can, you can look at this and you think, well, how, how can I see how many medals Austria have gone? There's a big um, sort of union thing in front of it. Um, and I get that, but in the decision here, if I wanted to do the same chart with no overlaps, you know, there'd be one there, one there, one there, one there. I'd only have room to, to five where I've got 20 or 30 there. Uh, it enabled me just to, to you know, bring in a bit of a metaphor, but it 
put some transparency in and it kind of, well, I thought it anything else, looked like a silly nice bird, so I thought, well, run with that. And so there are, there are times when pure analytics isn't what you want. If you're a, um, a, what's a newspaper, your boss say, right, I need to know how many medals has, has every team won. Of course you won't give them that. You'd sack you the next day. That's not what it's about. But this one sort of draws you in with interest to see not just when medals were won, but, but when they were. And you can, you, know, you can see a lot of the history of the world there, when it's Germany as a country and when it started and when it stopped, and you know, when the, the Yugoslavia and countries began to become countries in, the, in themselves. So, um, it was something that I wanted to stick with there. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Um, here's another pop chart. Uh, what's, what's the question it's asking here? Can anyone tell? It's, it's horrible. Don't, don't anyone do this. Even though I'm talking about uh, you know, taking visualization too seriously. I draw the line of this. This is 3D. This is where it's done. Don't ever see this again. But you came from my book and I looked at it and I laughed and I thought, yeah. Why well, do you put something here if you don't mean it? Yeah. <laughs> and there's an answer. And it's a good shot, look. It's got, a, it's, got a, it's got a proper title and everything. Oops, I don't It's even got um, sources, it's data, parameters. And this is a lot wider. Okay, that's the only one thing about this chart. But you know, a chart that just gives you a bit of riddle there just gets you more creative than thinking. Okay, I said do fun stuff next. So how many of you have um, seen some of these before? Maybe? Good, good. And uh, for those of you who are concentrating, how many of you have seen some of these before? So uh, a bit of a, a, a vanity trick for me to put one of my visits on a t-shirt. I had such fun doing them and you'll all be wearing them next year, I tell you. <laughs> um, but I mean, this sort of came out of this came from, I was looking at Mr. Men, and it began to design this theme and the literature. I thought, Mr. Men, that's about my level. I thought, well, what can you do about Mr. Men apart from what color they are and, and what color their nose is? And so I, I part that idea, but I'd but I, I really had fun with it. So, and I've run with a few others as well, Cartoon, Simpsons, Muppets, Mr. Men. You know, these, these aren't going to uh, tell you anything great and analytical, but. I learned skills doing this. I learned a lot about color doing this. I went back and Googled a whole lot of Mr. Men doing this. I enjoyed this. I did this in my childhood. So you can have a lot of fun um, with data uh, extraction and collection and um, just you know, all the different things you might be doing in that so. My next one I said be imaginative. Um, so this was a sort of imaginative way of doing a makeover Monday very quickly. Uh, makeover Monday. Um, I think there's a lot of new people here. It's, it's, a, um, it's a huge community initiative, which I am um, certainly grateful for, because I've participated in it for sort of two or three years. And what it is, is every Monday, um, Andy Greenwald and Eva Murray will put out a, a data set and they'll encourage you to come up with um, visualization. And usually there's a, a visualization already that's, that's not very good or can be improved on, and um, they'll give you full access to this data. Um, and there's enough people in the community on Twitter or doing it in Google and be able to uh, get to get ideas off them, see what they're doing, and they need all the feedback as well. So you can really get skills up really quickly. And it's a, it's a fantastic way of um, access to data, to a clean, wide variety of data sets, and, and a way of improving the skill that we need. I really recommend, if nothing else, adding this seriously that, that you can take a look at that on makeupmonday.co.uk. And it doesn't have to be Tableau, but it's, it's come from decent guys in the Tableau community for so many years. This time, I didn't have very much time, and I thought it was something different. I, I just put all my answers in a tweet using emojis. And all right, nine times over ten, it won't work. This time it kind of did. I, I had um, uh, a wide emoji, and I had all the different country emojis, and I was able to show what's gone up, what's gone down. I mean, that's, that could actually be quite a good idea. If you're in a social media department or Company, or you just wanted to get a quick and um, not even press release out there or something like that. Um, that's a really sort of nice, fun, quick way of um, doing something with a little bit more information out there. So it's not a tablet thing, but it's a what else can I do, you know, what, what other different mindset can I apply to this data visualization problem thing. The next one I said is um, be innovative. 
This, I think, was another, yes, this was another Make Open Monday project a couple of years ago. Um, and at that time, I was doing a lot of playing around with maps, and I thought, well, this, this quest is going to do about Africa. And I, I've never seen a, a, an Africa tile map. And I've also never seen a tile map done in triangles before. Um, I, I uh, went to a travel conference, he was looking into a way of generating these, um, and he found my, my uh, blog post as well, so we, we had a chat and um, we were able to sort of come up with this group. But most of these groups are just in the bit of um, graph paper, or um, Excel, or as if it were graph paper, just sort of colour in countries and try and um, uh, arrange them. So for, for this particular time on that, we've seen probably seen more of them for um, America. That's the most common time map used. I just sort of arranged all the different uh, Africa nations into a way that um, I was able to, to show them like that. Um, so, right, you've got large and small nations of uh, different sizes which are coming up with the, the same size on them, which is what you get in the tile map. So, often there's um, situations where they don't work all that well. But in this case, I had everything at a national level, all the data. And I was able to try this. And um, so sometimes you get lucky. I just put, put this in and I put it down. And I love this one. I say, oh, no, this is really good. I love the way you designed it with a sort of traditional African, African um, art design there. I didn't. But it came out that way. And so you, 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 you sort of Google it, you can see, you can sometimes see the sort of different shades of brown and different those lines. So I'm a little bit lucky there that the design choice I made. Um, really sort of drew attention to it. But it's, I, I think I said, just, you know, be creative. And, and if, you, if you have an idea and you want to think of something, um, often you have the opportunity to do it. And again, in this case, it was made up in London, it gave you that chance. So my next one says, inspire others. And in this case, I'm thinking of an example where I wanted to uh, to have a, a think. Uh, I wanted to, to play with a new chart type. And I, I played with this chart type down at the bottom there. All about visualizing um, timetable, uh, timetables, timelines. Uh, and these timelines, you can't sort of see them too well there, but that was just um, looking at uh, who won the English um, football league over the years, and one on the right, which is smaller than Spain. So the, the, big, the big loops there were teams that hadn't won them for ages in between times. Like there's a big purple Aston Villa one, and I think there's a, uh, a big, a light blue Man City one. Um, and then you see them all sort of bunching at the top, like the same teams winning over and over again. I thought that's that was quite cool, I put it out there. Um, but the one on the top there, that was beautiful. And that was done by uh, Michael Nixon, who, who um, they sent me a message and said, Neil, I really like the football thing. I like the way you put the curvy, but I want to do something completely different with it. Is that OK? I said, well, of course it is. I'll explain how it was done. Um, it didn't need much explaining. He's a, he's a genius himself. And he's come up with that. So he's used the same twists and turns to actually look like a metaphor that means something much nicer, wildfires in, in California. And that was a gorgeous visualization, which you may have seen, because I think it probably went to this of the day, this of the week, when you open Tableau, that kind of thing. So it's just, it was really good. And this, uh, this bit here, which you possibly can't see, but that's just what he put on his blog, saying, you know, I, I got the idea from Neil, and this is what he did afterwards. So that's a really good example. Right, Pink Floyd's summer term timetable. What's going on there? No dark sarcasm in the classroom? Thank you, partner. I think we should be I debated it. I, I could have put Craig David's weekly planning for that. No. <laughs> yeah, I think we would. You know that. But anyway, so just all sorts of business with uh, the, the, the media over there. That was my introduction to database. I probably explained a lot. Right, so I'm going to let this one to the end. Fool your readers. This is what people didn't like about this map here. They didn't want it to look at it and feel fooled. They didn't like to look at it and think this is a map of the UK because and this is where all the different animals, uh, all the different pets are. Because what I've done, um, I've said it's, you know, uh, brown is dogs, green is cats, and the two birds are two different types of uh, fish, for example. Um, now, if you thought these were positions on a map, you think, really? Does every individual region alternate between cats and dogs? Do all the people who own fish live on the sea? If you stop and think about it, no. And that, that makes it a bad visualization in some ways, because it's not really showing that kind of thing. It was a, it was a project I tried, which, which half worked and half didn't. It, it worked in as much as I looked at the numbers and I thought, wow, the proportions look just about 
as if, you know, the seats are round on the map. Uh, people were fish and cats and dogs and other things. I wonder if I can get something to work, and I did. Uh, and I think if you look at that, you can sort of take that information away from it. There's no way you can see the more people have dogs than cats there, or the more people have X than Y. I didn't really want to, to show that on this, and you know, perhaps I could have made it clearer. Um, I didn't want to make it clearer, I just wanted to have fun with that, uh, just to show that you can arrange things in a, in a map that don't have to be geographical. It, it, did, um, it did trouble people. Um, people did, I, I even put Easter eggs in there. Um, people didn't know. Uh, the, I put a rabbit there because there's a village called Bunny in Nottinghamshire, or or that they wrote on there to this point. You know, I I believe it's something for me, but um, but Hampstead there was as close as I could get to Amsterdam. So <laughs> um, and nobody got that. I feel quite strange if you got that. But it was in a way it was something that sort of started off this discussion. And it was, if there's anything that that needs explanation or that fools people, then it's not necessarily good. But I, I, I hope just by looking at some of the sort of fun visualizations, visualizations a little bit of a, a riddle, if you like, that it's okay to stop and think about it and then say, ah, I, I get it. And there's a, a more recent one here. This was on, uh, this was published by Bloomberg in America. Um, and this is a, a lot of publicity. It's a great chart, I think. Um, all about bankers. Um, and again, the first time I looked at this, I thought, well, what's going on here? Um, for that, the hundred largest landowning families own all of the forest. Oh, okay. What's going on there? Oh, no, it's not that. Um, this is just here for size. So it fooled me for a bit. I didn't mind that. Once I got it, I thought, oh, you understand this now. And how often in the media do you hear um, an area of, of land being owned by the Amazon? Well, it's not that big. 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 It's Something like that. So we, we have these things which are for our reference. So once you get that, you can look at this, and you, if, you, if your brain understands that you know, it isn't cows and nothing else in the middle of the US, if your brain understands that all of these are points of reference, uh, then it works as a really, I think, useful chart. So you can have the ideas of what else you know, and um, uh, the golf courses take up uh, uh, an area of um, the US. Approximately add to that in um, South Carolina. Anyway, to, to that sort of amount in the States, etc. Et so it's it's something that, that takes um, explaining. Um, and and it, it's important actually to, to notice that Bloomberg did explain it. It's sort of in a sort of scrolling fashion, but the, the, uh, the example that I've taken from uh, this ad, um, the example that uh, the land owned by Andrew. Largest private landowner and is so it's testing their coordination, talking and moving at the same time. This is a, a multitasking thing, as you're And they were large in the same time. So you can see that uh, they, they do sort of try and explain it, so people are scratching their heads thinking it's something like this. <coughs> and here's another map. Areas of uncertainty regarding your side awareness. I, think so. I hope you get that one. Source Band Aid, this is Bob Gelboff. Do they know his business? So I think it's my last one, let readers take their time. Um, there was a quote by uh, Seth Godin, and he was sort of responding to the, the sort of speed of um, consumption of uh, data visualization. So he said, I don't think that's what graphs are for. I think you're trying to make a point in two seconds. And uh, probably people are too lazy to read the 40 words underneath. So there's, a, there's definitely a culture, you, you might get um, the, this culture of yours, of encourage it do something and really concentrate on simplicity so that people will see it, that people will read it, people won't ignore stuff in there, because it's strange, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I, I'm going to see that, many people dispute that. So um, I've got to say, Cairo hates that, and I think we've got the Nigel Meeks, he's got a, uh, an amazing um, uh, blog in a few parts uh, to do with visualization of fast and slow. Um, which you can see there. It's a, the fast mode of data visualization is real. It is important. It's the cliche of um, uh, the, the, the director who's too busy and wants to see that figure there and there. It does exist, but it can't be our only view. Otherwise, we limit um, creators and readers. So, I mean, here's my example. Um, this is one I did a few months ago for diversity in tech companies. Um, it's one I was really pleased with, but I think there's a lot of things that I could 
Well, not that I can improve, but that I wanted to downsize the this meant that I needed to do quite a lot of um, explanation at the top as to how to read this. So what do I, I want to do? I wanted to look at um, different ethnicities, whether that was white female, not white female, white male, not white male, in each quarter for each of these 100, um, excuse me, each of these 100 tech companies that were in the, the survey data. And I, I really like the way it looks, and so do a lot of people. It's, it's clear, it's a total important message, but it's, I mean, it breaks some principles. It breaks the stuff, the stuff principles, for example. How can you, there's no way you can collect and you can see. Um, and what I wanted to show was that the, if you were a non-white female in only two of the 100 companies, even if you were there already, did you have the best chance of being promoted to a senior position? Now, um, you know, I, I know through having done the job that there, that there are those two there with the big um, pink squares in the bottom right. Uh, so that's where most of the explanation is there, one white female. now. I've highlighted the, um, the color uh, as to the, to the most likely um, ethnicity for being present, uh, promoted. But it needed a little bit of um, explanation. And so it needed a little bit of a, a bar chart up there to, uh, to make that point. So I think the visual was really good at drawing people in. I think the information that came from it, is, it needed a bit of work, and, and right here and now, it needs me to explain it, and tell you something else which doesn't make it ideal, but it's, it's, a, it's a good example of something where you shouldn't expect a reader necessarily to be able to understand your chart right away. You shouldn't expect a reader to take some time reading it. Now, that isn't the case in all examples, in like a, the culture where sometimes you don't have that time, and really is time. That does exist. Um, but I would sort of encourage people to think, well, from the times when it doesn't exist, is that okay? In order to bring a little bit of extra insight and perhaps some visual appeal to your job, then I think sometimes it is. Um, so what I did just this week, actually, the guys on um, Workout Wednesday, which is um, the was run in the UK previously this year, and now uh, Anne Jackson and Luke Stangy in the States um, put out a, a challenge every Wednesday. They asked people if they would, and um, they asked me if I would produce one. So I thought, well, a lot of people quite like that chart I did. Here's one with the uh, Superstore data. I was um, delighted that there was only information for 49 charts. Uh, states are not 50, and then I could put it into a square. Um, so I, I asked people to come up with this, and some people have ignored it, and a lot of people thought, oh, I really love that chart, and now I can see how you did it. And some people figured out how I did it, and to my delight, a few people found out much better ways of doing it. So uh, I experimented and came out of the way of doing it with, with, uh, with squares. Other people have found better ways of doing it, and there's been a whole lot of people in the community who have sort of taken this job and sort of seen something. And some people have said, actually, we do have a business case. Well, I might use this. I might use that. Thank you. Um, and here's an example. There's a, a lady called Rosario who um, is genius whenever all these, these uh, workout Wednesday challenges come out. She's seen it, she's done it, she's done it a little neater and tidier than I should do it in the first place. She's, uh, she's uh, put smarter coding in there as well, and she's blocked it. And not only she's blocked it, done all that in 24 hours, and she did it in English as well as Spanish. Um, so it's just amazing the, the amount of um, interest and talent that we have out there. Just, if a new idea comes out, then um, uh, people are going to be very interested in what they can do. So just coming towards the end, I've got a bit of a long quote there, and then really as we can see at the back. Um, but essentially, many minutes ago, someone thought it might be interesting to represent data with geometric shapes, and a bar chart was born, a line chart was born, a dot plot was born. So everything was new once. So what he's saying is if we stop experimenting, we're saying that's it. We're saying this is all that's left. And he says, we're at the pinnacle, right? and it's all downhill from there. I hope not. So that's, that's kind of my thinking behind sort of experimenting and behind um, Knowing that a bar chart might be the right thing to do, but thinking, well, I wonder if we could do this instead, or I wonder if we could have fun doing a different way of doing it. Um, because everything is new once. Now, I don't, I doubt there's a, a new, um, brand new type of chart out there. You, you, you just don't know. And I, I think that's why um, I would encourage you to experiment it, but at the right time, the right place. I mean, it's, it's a lot of the enjoyment that I get from um, data visualization and Tableau in particular, and um, the new ability. So I'll leave you with that quote, and I'll leave you with um, with Mijur's thoughts on uh, from his his European tour. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, I think it could be anything to. 
I really need some examples from later than 1982. <laughs> 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 anyway, again, it's all this, that, uh, and that's a very fun book, but otherwise, um, I hope that just in perspective, you have a lot of fun data visualization. But don't do 3D really bars. OK, and yeah, if you've got any questions, um, I've got time to get them now. Thank, Thank you very much, Richard and Neil. Um, does anyone have a question? No one? The, the question you were asking at $24.99, come and see me afterwards. <laughs> I do have a question. Okay. The Africa map. Yes. It's one of my all time favorites. Where did you take the inspiration from? Well, I took the inspiration just as um, one thing at a time. I, I took, got into the um, tile maps and I just recently understood there's some great sort of tutorials about how to do um, uh, tile maps for America, for example, where you have um, grid references of, of each of the particular states, which you can then just pull in and make them the row and the column of your particular um, chart. So I looked into that and then I thought, well, you can do hex maps as well. And um, sorry, can you can be okay. Yeah. Um, so you can do hex maps as well. And the other, I thought, what else can you test like? You can do triangles, so long as you go up and down. And I thought, well, I think in some situations that won't work. So it was, in the, it was in the back of my mind. And then when Africa came up, I thought, that's, that's so quite pointy towards the bottom. That might work for, for triangles. So when you triangles, you need two different um, alignments of triangles. You need center point up and center point down. But apart from that, you can, you can do tessellations with triangles as well as you can with uh, share with squares and triangles. But because I've been sort of playing a little bit with uh, the time maps and uh, looking for a triangle opportunity, that's what I decided to do there. Uh, and as I said, the, the, the design thing was, was a, a, little bit, a little bit lucky the way it sort of came up with that thing. But, uh, that's what it really worked. Thank you. Mike. Thanks. Um, Great presentation. Um, I'm Great presentation, Neil. You mentioned your blog briefly. Do you think that writing about data visualization has made you take it more or less seriously? Um, it's probably, I think writing about it has made me, uh, it, it might have made me take it less seriously, if I'm honest. Um, if only because writing about it, I, I, want, I, I don't want the blog to sort of fall into uh, a few months without doing it. So I always want to think, right, what can I do? So if I have an idea, um, sometimes I think, well, to make this into a blog post or make it into a, into a debate, then I might have to do something a little bit more um, uh, unusual or sort of less serious. So I don't think it's necessarily made me take it less seriously, but it's made me realize that some of the things that I do um, don't necessarily um, align with the, the, the Stephen Few side of things, the, the really sort of business best practice and nothing else type um, way of looking at things. But to embrace that and to decide, yeah, there's room for that. Um, I've, there's not room for me on the other side because I don't have the skill or the talent, or I'm not actually very good at Tableau. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of what I do, um, I, I sit and copy and paste and fill things down in Excel you know, on a Sunday afternoon in front of the TV because I can't do algebraics so and I can't figure out how to reshape it in other ways. I think this will work, I've got time. Nobody needs to know that I haven't thought of a clever way of doing it. So I would always encourage people to, to, to play and have that way of thinking uh, and to think, well, you, know, you can do things inside the tableau, you can do things outside the tableau, um, but you, know, you don't have to, to, to take it seriously in that sense either. Thank Thanks, Neil. Um, you, just, you mentioned that some of your uh, visualizations um, may not have had enough information in there and had to you know, encourage people to look into them in more detail. Um, what are your thoughts on like tooltips and, and how you sort of use them in your visualizations and, and sort of what would you recommend for other people to use that kind of functionality? Well, I think, I think there's advantages and disadvantages of tooltips, but I think Tooltips are really advantageous in some of the kind of things that I do. So even if you go back to the uh, the, the, um, the orange one I did, the, the most sort of abstract of the lot, with that I had visited tooltips. So if you, if you to hover over anything, you see uh, Denzel Washington, six Oscar nominations, etc., etc. 
that there's always the possibility that people just won't see tooltips. So people have to see that information. You can't rely on tooltips. But if, it's, if you're doing something that you know that you can't necessarily always see the information, or for example, the, the joy plot there, um, where I, I haven't put the numbers on the, the axes or anything like that, but just sort of left the actual um, metadata there, it's, it's a really good idea to, to make sure that you put as much into your tooltips as you can. Um, be aware that if you're presenting with something like this, or you know, on a wall, or something like that, or a magazine, that those, they are not going to be seen. So if that's important, that the analysis that you get out of it is really important, then you know, maybe that's not the way of doing it. But um, it is a really useful tool to have, is to make you see those tools. And visit tool tips is nice as well. I'm still learning that, but I think that can really sort of add value uh, to, to some of the things. Thank you so much, Neil. We have pizzas now. We are going to do a break. Uh, please have yourself some pizza. Talk to each other. And um, we're going to get back here in like 15 minutes, so, um, so, so this is right. Thank you so much.